Hello and welcome back to a new tutorial. This week we're creating this satisfying but simple MoGraph setup in Cinema 4D. If you're not new to my channel then you might already have an idea of how this is set up but if you are new here then hopefully you can learn something new. So first things first we want to add in a sphere and we'll make that a bit smaller, change its type to hexahedron and we can lower its segments, maybe go for 24 and yeah let's make this quite small maybe like Let's go for like 10 centimeters, or maybe go eight, because we might add quite a few into our scene. To get some more of them, we're gonna add a cloner. So holding Alt, we can select the cloner, add in those in, and let's bring them all a lot closer together. And we can add some more on each axis. Uh, let's go for the Y axis first, and we also need to make sure those are closer together. And then we can add a few more to the X and Z. So we've got a nice amount of spheres here and we can drop a rigid body tag onto these as well. We'll drop that on and if we head straight to our forces tab, we can up this follow position to, let's go for one for now. Now you might have gravity already enabled in your scene. So if you hit control D, head over to simulation and under scene, you'll have this gravity here, which I already turned mine off to zero by default but you might need to do the same. And once we've done that, we can add in our force. So we go to forces and we've got this uh, field force here that we can drop in. And inside that field for this field force, we need to drop in a cylinder. Make sure we make that cylinder bigger than our cloner. So all the spheres are inside that cylinder. Now we need to up our strength, but not in the positive direction. We want to go into the negative so that our spheres are being pulled in. So we'll turn this down. Let's go for minus two, three, five. And we'll hit play. And yeah, that's good. We're pulling in our spheres into the center. Now we just want to create some randomness. So we'll add it in a turbulence, drop that in. And we'll up its scale quite a bit maybe like 40, somewhere around there. And we can up the strength a little bit too. Go for 16. And if we hit play now, so we've got a little bit of randomness going on. Maybe we could lower the strength of our field force. Maybe it doesn't need to be as strong. So let's go for like minus 150. Now that's a bit better. Now we've got a bit more randomness going on. Let's increase our timeline. Let's go for like 250 so we can see what's going on a bit more. And inside our field force, we can go to display and turn off that display box. We don't need to see those lines. Now, for some reason, my clones seem to be stopping their movement after a little while. I don't know if that's just because they're not moving enough that they just kind of deactivate the rigid body. If I turn the turbulence up a little bit, seems to be okay. If I keep that a little bit higher, maybe that's all we needed to do. Maybe actually I'll turn down the scale and then yeah, keep the strength higher. Something like this might be better. Now, to create the randomness in the size, we need to drop in a plane effector, making sure that we've got our cloner selected. So we can drop our plane in, and we'll go into the parameter, turn off the position, turn on the scale, turn on uniform scale, and then we can play around with this scale. We'll make this a little bit bigger, maybe like 0.5. And we'll go into our fields, and we'll drop in a shader field. And then we'll drop in a noise for that, go into that, and we'll start editing this property. Now for this, I will up the global scale to 600. I'll keep my relative scale on the X and Z the same, but I'll lower the Y scale, I think. Let's go down for like 10. And then let's turn the contrast up, not all the way to the top, but pretty much there, just so it's quite sharp because this is gonna show the contrast in between the smaller spheres and the bigger spheres. So yeah, the sharper that is, the more you can tell the difference. So maybe around around 91, try that. And maybe to help visualize this a little bit better, we could add the color. So make sure you've got a new material that you can drop onto your cloner. So I'll drop that on and let's just open that up. And what we need to do is add in a color user data node. Drop that on. And in the attribute name, we need to go to presets, MoGraph, color, and then just plug in our color to our base color here. And maybe we could even drop it onto our subsurface color. And I'm gonna just up the roughness a little bit and then also turn up our subsurface. But you can do whatever you want with this material. That's just what I've done for my example. So we'll exit out of here and 
we've got our material set up. We just need to set up our effector. So we'll go back onto our effector, make sure we're in the parameter tab and we'll change this color mode to custom color where we can pick whatever color we want. So I could go for blue. So when I hit play now, you can see we've got a little bit more of a visualization for what one's being affected by our plane effector. Now I wanted to set my base color of the spheres, like the smaller ones to be that orange color. So I'm gonna add in another plane effector, but we won't have any actual transform parameters being changed. We're gonna just change the color, custom color, we'll look for a nice orange. And we just need to make sure that the order of our effectors is correct. So with this new one that we've just created above the first one we made, and now our original spheres are gonna be that orange color. And then when they grow, they'll become the blue color. Now I want this to be animated as well, because right now this looks cool, but it's boring. We can make this look a little bit more interesting. Let's head into our shader field, open that back up and we've got this movement and speed. We can either use these or we can use our animation speed here. I could up this, go to like one. And when I hit play now, you can see how this already looks quite cool to be fair. And I'm also gonna turn on this geometry only playback so that we don't have our uh, fields and stuff showing up when we watch these back. But yeah, this is looking quite nice already. So you can either use the yeah normal animation speed, which works quite well, or we can turn this off and use a directional one. So I'm gonna go 0, 0.0 or, or 0 0.1, we'll go 0 0.1. And then we'll just go 0 0.5 for the speed. And I hit play now. So this one has more of a direction. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is going up. So the you can see kind of where the blue is just moving up and then the orange is moving up. So it's up to you, play around with these and see what you like. But I quite like the directional ones. You can even mix them up could add in some random animation speed as well. Now I've dropped in my render viewer as well now and you can see I haven't got any lighting set up so this is looking a little bit dull. What we need to do is frame up our camera, move it back a bit, might actually turn up the focal length, we'll go to like 80 and then I'll just move back away and I can see in my render viewer this is how it would look. So yeah this is a nice framing and now we can just set up some light. So with my light null selected here, you can just drop in holding shift uh, an area light and I'm going to add an animation target tag and set that to our light tracker and then I'm going to move this light kind of in front and up to the side of our spheres, maybe turning down the spread a little bit um, and let's see how that's looking. So we're getting a nice light coming up from the top right, it's a little bit harsh and so maybe I could turn that down a little bit and maybe also then drop in a dome light and I'll disable that in the viewport because that's a little bit annoying and I think we can create a second area light and we'll move that to the opposite side but down lower and kind of a little bit more behind it so it's creating like a bit of a rim around these uh, these back spheres and we'll turn the spread down for that one even more make it quite sharp but then also turn down the exposure so it's not too strong. But this looks this looks quite good. Maybe the original area light, the top right one, we can turn that one down just a little bit more. Hmm, I reckon around here looks pretty good. We can hit play. And yeah, this is this is looking pretty nice. I think maybe my field force could be even lower actually. It feels like they're still quite tight together, so maybe we could go for like minus 70 because I kind of want them to float around a little bit more feel a little bit more free I mean they're still a little bit tighter I think what we could do is in our fields tab we could add in another shader field and kind of do what we did before just add in a noise turn up the contrast and add some animation speed because it's going to kind of these black areas wherever that is in 3d space where we'll disable that field force and then the white spaces will activate it. So some of the spheres should be a little bit more free to move around, hopefully. And it's kind of working, they're loosening up a little bit, but also if we go back into our rigid body tag, we need to turn down this follow position. We can turn this down and it will that will really allow them to be a bit more free. So if we go for 0 0.5 and hit play now, 
You see now they're kind of they're flowing around a lot nicer. I think I'm gonna change my material just a little bit more. Let's add a little bit of coating, just give a little bit of reflection. I think that looks quite nice. So yeah, adjusting the follower position will have a big impact on how freely these spheres can move. See if I turn it down just by 0.1, they're flowing around even more, could go even lower. And yeah, it just depends on how tightly you want these to hold. I think a 0.4 or a 0.5 works the best for me. You could layer multiple of these plane effectors on top of them. You could have different things going on. You could have some making the spheres even smaller or going different colors. You can just create multiple layers and then just make sure that in the cloner, you're putting the effectors in the correct order. So there you have it, a satisfying but simple MoGraph setup. So that brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new, please be sure to drop a like and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you. Hey.